welcome to the last day of the Get Ready for the School Year Blitz. Today we're going to talk about getting out the door. I know. Are we ever going to be able to leave our houses again? I have no idea. But if we do, these are the things that we're going to need to do. Remember, if you want the printables, they're inside of the Facebook group, or you can go to Organize365.com slash Blitz. You can watch the replay of this video and the other four that we've already done this week on YouTube, on the Facebook page, in the Facebook group, on Instagram TV. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. We are going to have an amazing, amazing, amazing school year and we are going to get ready for the fall so today we're going to cover just a few more things that we haven't hit this week and that is how do we get out of the door so when you're getting out of the door for school you're likely going to have a backpack and as soon as you hit high school girls you might also have a purse i love this day for adults also what do you need to get out the door there was a meme that just went around this week that was like Getting out the door in 2019, you needed your wallet, you needed your keys, you needed your sunglasses. Getting out the door in 2020, and it's like this laundry list of everything that you need before you leave. Your mask, your hand sanitizer, holy water, everything. You need everything if you're going to leave the house. It's not really about what kind of backpack you buy or what kind of purse you have or what kind of car you drive. Today is more about setting up the habits and the systems and the routines that will allow you to literally get in the car and go without going, oh, I forgot this, oh, I needed to have this, or end up late somewhere. So specifically, for your back or your purse, and a purse is just an adult version of a backpack, for either of those, it is helpful every single weekend to completely clean it out, like empty it all the way out, throw away all of the trash, Put all of your receipts inside of your Sunday basket, finish any of the papers you need to do, and then repackage everything on Sunday night. You should completely empty your purse and your backpack once a week just to keep it fresh and keep it organized. Also, if you are college age or you are able to have medications, like I mentioned the other day, having a little teeny tiny sunscreen inside of your backpack. Uh, I get migraines, so I have my migraine medicine inside of my purse. Uh, myself and my son are asthmatic, so we have an asthma inhaler. Now you know, if you're in a school, you have to have a note for that, or you can't just have any kind of medications in your backpack just because you want to. But if you need a note for an inhaler or Advil or whatever, it is time for your doctor to sign a note for that. There is a standard note that you can print out or you go to your pediatrician that says, my child can have, and you leave this with the nurse, they can have Benadryl and Advil and ibuprofen and all these things. Doesn't mean you can have it in your backpack, but if you have that note on file that is signed by your physician at the nurse's office, and then you go to the nurse with a headache and they call your parents, they can verbally say, yes, they can have Advil, and then they get Advil in the nurse's office because you already have a doctor's note for that. So look into that if you did not know that that exists. The second thing I wanna to talk to you about, which is even more important than your backpack or, or your purse, is your morning checklist. I know. If you're like any other kid I've ever met on the planet, um, you resist having any kind of a checklist. Checklists feel like to-do lists or obligations, and we're like, I don't wanna do those. I, don't make me, don't make me do things. But I am telling you, once my kids embraced or at least acquiesced and did the checklist or would look at the index card that I had for them, all of our mornings go more smoothly. The key to having a morning checklist is that it is not too short, but it is not too long. So if it only has one or two things on it, probably not long enough. If it has more than seven or 10, probably too long. There only need to be like three to five things. If these three to five things are done, you are gonna have a great day. For me, I'm just gonna tell you, as soon as I was high school age, one of those things on my checklist was deodorant. Because if I got to school and I forgot to put my deodorant on, I mean, no one else really noticed, but I knew and I just didn't feel comfortable. Brushing my teeth, making sure I had deodorant on, I was always going to brush my hair. I didn't have to put brush my hair on my list, but things that I had accidentally gotten to school and forgotten to do, another thing that's always on my checklist and also my son's is having a sweatshirt or a sweater. So I look adorable, I look cute, I look like I'm ready for summer right now. I had a sweatshirt on before this video and I will put a sweatshirt on after this video. My arms are always cold. So any day I ended up at school without a sweater or a sweatshirt was a long, cold day for me. 
So my morning checklist would say, make sure you brush your teeth, make sure you put on deodorant, make sure you have a sweatshirt, make sure you have your homework. If, if you're in sports or after school activities or um, after school you go to a babysitting job or something like that and you need to have a snack or you need to have a change of clothes or you need to have something specific for that, that could be on your morning routine too. So morning routine, brush your teeth, put on deodorant, grab a sweatshirt, check your afternoon schedule. That would be my morning routine. Everyone's morning routine is going to be different. I have here on a list, some things would be vitamins. If you take vitamins or medicines, those would be on your morning checklist. Breakfast. For me, I eat the same exact breakfast every day. I can show it to you. For the last 10 years, this is the breakfast that I eat. So I can literally grab this and I could take it in my purse. It just works for me. So if you always have cereal every single morning, you probably don't need to put that on your checklist. You're going to remember that. And then one, another thing that I do is I put my backpack or my purse right in the car the night before. Now I don't put my purse in there, but I do put any bags. So I'm going to the office after this. I already loaded up my bag that I use when I go to the office and I put it in the car last night. And I put my laptop in the car last night. Like everything that I need for my afternoon meetings was put in the car last night. You know why? Even though I'm a morning person, I tend to forget things in the morning. So I would rather at night when I'm looking at my schedule for tomorrow, put it in the car um, the night before. If you catch a bus at the end of your street and you don't get in a car to go to school, put your backpack by the front door. Like don't even leave it in your bedroom. Put the backpack by the front door with your sweatshirt on top of it. And then a note, grab your lunch so that you don't forget to grab your lunch. Speaking of lunches, that is the next thing we're gonna talk about today is lunches. We like to eat, right? There are a lot of parents going, oh my gosh, I had no idea my kids ate this much because now that we've been home for so long during the pandemic, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, snack number two, dessert, evening snack, all these things are being eaten at home. And boy, are we eating a lot, right? Like, have you gained any weight? I may or may not have. Our dog went to the vet yesterday and I lifted him up to put him in the car. He's not a huge dog. And I was like, oh, Hunter, I think you gained some weight. And we got to the vet, he did. He gained like a, a pound and a half. Even the dog is gaining weight during the pandemic. I don't know what to tell you, but we're all gaining weight. So lunch. If you're going to be schooling from home, you're still going to want lunch. And here's the thing. Just like at school, you may or may not have time to make lunch, but I can tell you who for sure is not going to have time to make lunch is your parents if they are also working. So making breakfast before school and the workday happens, making dinner after the school and the workday happens, that's a thing. Lunch is difficult because literally you have to stop work, stop school, create lunch, eat lunch, clean up lunch. So the more you can make your lunch simplified, repetitive, divide up the tasks again, if we're gonna be schooling from home, I'm not saying we are, but if you end up anytime this year schooling from home, lunch should work like a cafeteria. You literally should show up, eat your lunch, put it in the trash can and get back to school. It is not time for parents to stop working and fire up the grill and make customized lunches for everyone. And what do you want? I don't know, I think I want this. Oh, I want to modify it. No, 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 no. There's no choice here. It's like Wednesday is pizza day and Thursday is taco day and Friday is peanut butter and jelly or whatever it's going to be. Like literally have a school lunch menu. If school is happening at home, it's going to be just like anywhere else. I also think something that could reduce a lot of stress is pack your lunch the night before. Leave it in the refrigerator, but know what you're gonna have. Even if it's a microwavable thing or something that you would not normally take to school, decide the night before what your lunch is going to be. Do we have it? Do you know how to cook it? When are you gonna make it? And for the most part, most kids can make their own lunch. Like take on the ownership of your own lunch and also put what you want for lunch on your school list. And then the last one is the car. So clean out the car, give the car a bath, stock up your car with snacks if you're going to be out. And then another thing is it's time to get an oil change or any of those things. Just like there's waiting lists to get into doctors and waiting lists to get into everything else, there may be a waiting list to get your car oil changed. Now, interestingly, you may not need an oil change because we have not been driving as much, but those kind of sneak up on you. It'll be much easier to do any car maintenance that needs to be done now in the beginning of August than to get into the swing of fall and start it to get into the routine and 
all of the produ productivity is starting to creep up and then you have to figure out how to stop and schedule an oil change depending on what kind of restrictions we have around us. So get your car ready to go, just like you're getting your kids ready to go, just like you're getting yourself ready to go. So that is our last day in the getting ready for the fall school year blitz. Now I know a lot of you have been doing these actions every single day that I've been telling you and I'm super excited about it. Like at the end of Monday night, after we talked about clothing and getting new clothing and going through your closets, I got so many DMs and there were so many comments on these posts and emails that we got about kids actually going through their closets in just 30 minutes to an hour, cleaning the entire thing out and then being able to verbally tell their parents, this is why I don't like this and this is why I love this and parents being able to spend their money more wisely. And also realizing that when I was at the stores and I was shopping for my clothes, I noticed that the stores seemed kind of empty and the sweatshirt that I got that I wore on Tuesday, which I love, um, I bought in a size, one size bigger than mine because they didn't have my size. And I said, do you have this size in the back? And they said, there's nothing in the back. And in every store I went in, they were like, there's nothing in the back. Like there's no inventory in the back. Everything they have is in the store. So I think this is because they're filling a lot of orders online. So the company may have more stock, but the actual store you're going to doesn't have stock. But also, you know, as we get into the fall, there will be less inventory available. Like there's a lot of spring stuff on sale and great prices, like the dresses that I got for um, the launch of the book. But there will not be that quantity of clothing in the fall because as the economy went down and as the supply chains got all confused in the spring, a lot of retailers canceled their orders for fall or they didn't order as much for fall. So when we get to fall and we have clothing options for fall, my prediction is there will be less quantity and there will be less sizes. So if you happen to have a really popular, your body happens to be a really popular size, or I remember, I don't know, my kids seem to be like in the size 6X forever and there was never any 6X clothing whenever I went anywhere. So whatever size your kids are, if they wear a slim, if they wear a regular, if they, whatever their extra special clothing size is, if you notice it's hard for you to get that now, it's gonna be even harder, I think, in the fall. So don't put off these things. Don't say, oh, well, I'm gonna, I don't really know what's gonna happen for school, so I'm not going to do this right now. Go ahead and dive in. Go ahead and get ready for school. It's, it's all gonna be great. We're definitely going to have school. Now I wanna tell you about a couple of things that Organize 365 has specifically for kids. So if you've liked this, if you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought about half of the things that Lisa just told me about for school, or I, uh, the, yes, she's right, those things totally happen, but I didn't think about them proactively, that's what I do. Like I help you think about the spaces you have in your house and the routines that you go through in a different way as a parent, as an educator, and as a problem solver. And there are a couple of things I have to offer you. So we already talked about the Lisa binder, which you can get in the Organized 365 shop, which is a binder with divider inserts. And then you can make that Lisa binder that we talked about. And then we also have planners. We have the planner that I talked to you about for elementary and middle school and a planner for high school and college. What is unique about our kids program, and you have to be in the kids program before you can get either of these, <laughs> either of these planners, um, is that we do a lot of education and then we offer physical components. We do the same thing with our 100 day program. You get in the 100 day program, you get 100 videos that cover 100 days and Facebook group, all these amazing things, an app that's coming in September, and then you also get a physical planner. So Organize 365 loves to marry three things together. One, a physical product that ends up at your door that helps you do whatever your organizing is. Two, online instruction and education in some kind of a course inside of our dashboard. And then three, a community aspect where you could talk to other people that are going through the same course you are and you could get your questions answered by them and also the Organize 365 staff and the people that have joined us inside of our certification. So I am gonna try in Facebook, let's see if I could do it, if I can change over and share my screen. Uh, won't let me do it because I've already started. That is what I was afraid of. Um, okay, so I know. I'm going to stop this on Facebook. I'm going to start again.